Okay, let's add Apple authentication to our Supabase application. So we're gonna start by going to developer.apple.com and you'll need an Apple developer account and you'll need to be logged into that. Go ahead and click account to take you to the dashboard of your developer account. Now our first step is we're gonna to need to obtain an app ID that has sign in with Apple capabilities. So we'll go over to certificates, IDs, and profiles. We're gonna go over to identifiers on the left and hit plus to create a new app ID. Select app ID and hit continue. Select app and hit continue. And put in the name of your app here and then create a bundle ID. Now, Apple recommends using reverse domain name style strings. So we'll say com.azabab.app here. And then it's very important that you scroll down and select sign in with Apple right here. And then select continue and then register, and now we've registered our app ID. The next step is to obtain a services ID. So we're gonna do the same thing here from certificates, identifiers, and profiles. Click the plus next to identifiers, select services IDs, hit continue, fill out your app information a second time. And you're gonna to need to enter a new identifier that can't be the same as the first one. So we're going to say service. since it's a services ID. But you can, as long as it's not the same as the first one, you can do whatever you want here. And then we're going to go ahead and click register. And now we have our services ID. Now we need to configure our service IDs. So we're going to click on our newly created services ID. Click on sign in with Apple, click configure, select the app ID that we created before. In the list of domains, we need to put the domain of our application. And then return URLs is where we put in our callback URL uh, for our Superbase application. So in order to get that, we're going to need to go over to Superbase and go into our project. And then if you click on the left down to settings and go to API, Here's the URL for your application. This is your application ID at Supabase. So just go ahead and copy this entire URL to the clipboard, then go back into your Apple page and paste that into return URLs. In order to get the complete callback URL, you're gonna to need to add slash A-U-T-H slash V1 slash callback. And this is the same callback URL for all of the different providers, not just Apple. Once you've entered that, you can click Next, and then click Done at the bottom, and click Continue at the upper right, and click Save, and we have created our services ID. Next, we'll need to download our secret key that will be used to create the client secret. So we're gonna go over to Keys on the left, and we're gonna click Create a Key, We'll register a new key name. Just the name of our app works just fine for that. I'm going to scroll down and select Sign In with Apple. Click Configure. Select the app ID that we created. Click Save. Click Continue. Uh, click Register to register the new key. And then click Download to download our key file. Next, we need to generate a client secret from that key. So to do that, we're going to need to have Ruby installed in our system. Make sure you have Ruby installed. In addition to Ruby, you're going to need this gem called ruby-jwt, which lives at github.com slash jwt slash ruby-jwt. So this will give you instructions for installing this gem on your system. But the command for macOS is sudo gem install jwt. Now I've already done this, but I'm gonna go ahead and run this again. But you should see gem installed. Next, you're gonna to need to create a Ruby script in order to make this work. And here's the Ruby script that I downloaded. This one's called secret underbar gen .rb. This is in our guides. You'll find this on the net as well, or you could copy it right from here. Once you have your Ruby script, you'll need to change a few identifiers in the Ruby script before you can run it. First is the path to your private key that you downloaded. So let's go back to the private key. And here it is copy that and you'll need the full exact path there's your key file make sure that 
file exists, then you're going to need your team ID from the Apple developer site. If you go back to the developer page, it's in the upper right corner next to your, your name or underneath your name. I'll go ahead and copy that to the clipboard, take that back to your script, and put that in under your team ID. Next, you're going to need the service ID of the service you created, which is also your client ID. So in our case here, that's com.asabab.app.service. And then you'll need the key ID of your private key. Now that's shown right back in the developer site here, but it also happens to be this unique part of the string in your downloaded key file. So you'll just need that part, paste that in exactly as it shows up here, and then go ahead and save your script. And then we're going to run our script by writing Ruby secret gen RB, and that generates our key. In order to save the key, you can run it again and, and dump it into a file. I'm going to put this into client secret. So now we have a file. And now the next step is to add our client ID and client secret into our application. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this secret to the clipboard. So we already know what the client ID is. We've used it a couple of times already. The next step is to go into our Superbase application. We're going to go to authentication over on the left and go down to settings and we're going to enable Apple authentication and then we need to fill out the Apple client ID and the client ID is going to be .azabab.app.service and the Apple secret will paste in click save and now we have our client ID and secret saved with our Superbase application and now all we need to do is create some code to log in to our application. To do that, we're going to go into our uh, JavaScript application. We're going to import create client from Superbase, the Superbase JS library. The next step is we're going to need a reference to the Superbase object that we can use to log in. Superbase makes that real easy for us. If we go back to our Superbase project and we go down to API, authentication, our Superbase key and Superbase URL are pre-populated for us. So all we need to do is hit copy on this code and then we're going to paste it right into our application. There's our Superbase key and then we can go back and get the Superbase URL and the instantiation of the Superbase object. So we just hit copy over here, go back to our application and uh, we can get rid of this process env that's for node applications and we are on a client application here. That's all the code we need to instantiate the Superbase object. Now we're going to need two functions, one to log in and one to log out. The first function will log in with Apple and the second function will do a, a generic logout function. So the user can log in to our application with Apple and log out. Generally, I'll create, instead of a login with Apple, I'll create login with provider and then pass it the name of the provider so I can log in with multiple providers. And then whatever I pass in here, I'll pass down to our function. So now we need the code to log in with providers. So we'll go back to Superbase for that. If you go to the Superbase documentation and you go over to reference, you go down to auth and down to sign in, because that's what we're doing, we're signing in. Once you get to the sign-in page, go down to sign in with third-party providers. Because Apple is a third-party provider, and this is the code that we need. So we're going to copy it, and then we're going to paste that code right into our function. The only thing we need to change here is our provider name is Apple. And there are eight different providers available at this time. GitHub, Google, GitLab, Bitbucket, but we're using Apple in this case. And then we need uh, to go back to our logout function and that code is down under sign out, off that sign out. And that is just a single line of code that we can copy into our logout function here. Save it. Now we have everything we need for our users to log in with Apple and to log out of our application.